Or are you like me? Teaching wasn't your first plan, but it turned out to be the right one. That first day, I pulled into a hot California desert parking lot at a nondescript elementary school and found my way to the front office and eventually to the farthest portable in the last of many rows. I sighed when I walked in and saw the rows of desks and piles of books and a lot of random items in that musty classroom. I almost walked out. I'm glad I didn't. There was a knock at the door. We hear you're new and could use some help, said two teachers. Their smile told me that they knew that was a gross understatement. I hadn't even turned on the lights yet when these two heroes came to save the day. Their official title was coach, and they literally improved the education of hundreds of students by working with wide-eyed, new, overwhelmed teachers like me. Shortly after, the four other sixth grade teachers popped in to offer their support. And this group became the safety net of my first few years of teaching. Colleagues to rely on, coaches for support and feedback, a team that could support me. This is what we all need. These colleagues represent what we all need to succeed. Collaboration, connection, relationship, respect, value. This is a collaborative culture, and we need it in our professional lives, in our classrooms with our students, on our leadership teams, in our staffs, and in our larger community of educators transforming to changing American education today. Teaching isn't traditionally a collaborative effort. Classrooms can feel like silos, rushing in adult conversation into recess and lunch breaks barely long enough to go to the bathroom. It can be lonely and isolating and hard. I know I was lucky. We've all heard the abysmal statistics of the new high rates of new teachers who leave the profession. Teacher retention is at a crisis point, and for many teachers, it's because they didn't have the collaborative team to support them. In this room, I'm guessing that many, if not most of you, work in collaborative environments with colleagues and students. That you take advantage of being independent charter schools and innovate with school learning programs and instructional techniques. That you use local and needs-based decision-making. You will recognize yourself in what I'm here to talk with you about today. I'm here to catalyze your team to the next level of collaboration and to innovate specifically with school governance, to move beyond teacher voice, beyond a collaborative culture, to a place where educators, teams have autonomy to collectively call the shots, places where shared leadership structures and democratic decision makings thrive. We call these teams teacher powered. As we create student-centered learning schools designed to meet the needs of all students, we need to acknowledge that traditional systems, structures, and practices were never designed for this end. In fact, the system not only reflects industrial age concepts of teaching and learning, it was never designed to meet the needs of all students. It wasn't designed for equity, equity for students or equity for teachers. Teacher Powered works to break this cycle by moving decisions closer to educators who work with students every day. Educators who understand these students as whole persons, who have collective power to make immediate decisions at their school and to do what is best for their students and their communities. Different teams make different choices depending on their environments, their students, and their communities. Trusting the professionals closest to students together with families affirms the value of each community. I challenge you to reimagine what is possible in terms of school governance, in terms of school practices and culture to advance equitable learning for all students. This is a spectrum. Some of you are new to this. Many of you are already doing part of this work by taking advantage of autonomies offered to charter schools to better serve students, and a few teams in here already identify as teacher-powered. As a teacher-powered community, 
We strive to rise above traditional education tensions. This is not about unions versus districts versus charters. This is about students. And we focus on creating student-centered learning environments designed and led by the professional educators at each site. Our goal is to support these teams in terms of resources, skills, and connections to each other so they are better able to innovate with school leadership and create student-centered learning environments. The highly respected education researcher, Linda Darling Hammond, writes, collaboration among educators is critical, not just because it's a nice thing, not just because working with other teachers is a nice thing to do. In fact, it turns out that high-performing schools organize people to take advantage of each other's knowledge and skills and create a common, coherent practice so that the whole is far greater than the sum of the parts. The chartering opportunity was created for this very reason. Joe shared quite powerfully this morning the history of chartering with us. Chartering was created as an opportunity to do schools different, differently, to move decisions closer to those who work with students, namely the teachers, and to try innovative learning programs and instructional techniques. And then the hope was that these innovations would make their way into the mainstream district schools who would continue working to improve the traditional system. There are places where chartering looks very similar to this original vision, particularly in Minnesota, where the first charter law was passed, and as I've learned this week, in New Mexico. There are also places it looks very different. As independent charter schools, you have embraced this opportunity to do school differently, to reimagine what teaching, leading, and learning looks like at today's schools. What draws me to the Coalition of Public Independent Charter Schools is its commitment to this version of chartering, where teams receive autonomy in exchange for accountability, where teachers are treated as professionals, where collaborative leadership is the norm, and where schools are student-centered. Reimagining what education looks like for educators and students allows us to innovate on our strengths and build a better system. Former Education Secretary Arne Duncan says, the good schools in this country haven't managed to defeat the lies that undermine our system so much as they have been able to circumvent them. My educator story continues beyond my years as a classroom teacher to an assistant principal and finally to Education Evolving where I work today. My work with Education Evolving and Teacher Powered Schools began 10 years ago in 2009 when I found myself at Minnesota New Country School, an independent charter school in rural Minnesota. I was brought on to the project by lead author Kim Ferris Berg to offer an educator perspective on what happens when teachers call the shots. This was our first site visit, our first opportunity to see a team that had circumvented the system. And I was skeptical. I had never been at, worked at, or even heard of a teacher-led school before this project. And as I've told you, I had co collaborative colleagues, but real collaborative leadership wasn't something I could imagine working at a school site. The principal was in charge, the traditional system was simple in concept, and it didn't occur to me that there was another way to do it. Maybe many of you are skeptical too. Walking into Minnesota New Country School does not feel like a traditional school. They use project-based learning. Each student has their own personal workspace. They gather with advisors in informal groups. They freely walk around the building, grab a coffee, talk to classmates. It feels different. And it is clearly an amazing student-centered school. And yet it's hard to see how the governance is different until we were able to observe a staff meeting at Avalon, another independent charter school in St. Paul, Minnesota the next day. Here, we were able to ob observe their collaborative leadership in action, and I was blown away. And as we continued the project, each school we visited, each student and teacher we interviewed, confirmed what I'd noticed. Collaborative leadership works for students and teachers. So what is teacher powered? Teacher powered is a governance structure where the teams of teachers have collective autonomy to design, create, and make final decisions. A key word in there is collective autonomy. 
This is not independent teacher autonomy in a classroom. It's the collective team. Teams gain autonomy in multiple ways, ranging from charter contracts to bylaws to MOUs with districts and unions to state waivers, and even in some cases informally by leadership goodwill. We have found 15 distinct areas teams can have autonomy in. In some cases, teams have autonomy in all 15 areas, and in others, only a few. On average, most of the teams that we have found have autonomy in at least nine of the 15 areas. Many teams have site administrators, but this role is reimagined. Often principals still teach, administrative tasks are spread out amongst staff, and most building administrators see themselves as one member of the larger team. Their role as principal is to help the team implement what the whole team has designed and created together. Many teams also include support staff, families, and communities into these governance models. The collaborative, the collaborative leadership piece looks different at each school because the individual teams get to decide what is best for their staff and their students. No two teacher-powered teams are governed identically. It is not a model one can replicate. It must be created as a collaborative process. What all teacher-powered schools have in common is that they're student-centered, and their teams are committed to keeping students at the center of all design and decision-making. We use Education Evolving's seven principles of student-centered learning to understand what student-centered means in practice. At teacher-powered schools, each team implements some or all of these principles in ways best suited for their communities. Keeping students at the center of decision-making is the best practice in any school building. Unfortunately, it is not always the reality. As we work today to create equitable student-centered learning environments, teacher-powered teams lead the way by modeling the power of consistently putting students first and having the structures and practices that allow them to do this. Teacher Powered flips the traditional hierarchy around and puts teacher teams and students at the top, teachers who know their students and communities best and are the knowledgeable professionals trained to teach in teaching and leading. Moving away from industrial era ideas about bosses and workers allows teacher powered teams to better govern and meet the needs of modern students, and yet, going against the status quo is hard. When things are difficult, the instinct is to revert back to what people know and are comfortable with. Teacher Powered goes way beyond including a teacher on a team or asking a teacher's opinion. Teacher Powered teams aren't just asking opinions or looking to include teacher voice. They are creating systems and structures for teachers to make the actual decisions that impact student success. We know from our research that when teacher teams have collective autonomy, they are willing to take accountability for their decisions. Real collaborative decision-making brings the whole team around the shared purpose for the benefit of students. Shared leadership structures are one of the defining characteristics of teacher-powered schools. These teams value checks and balances and want to include teachers in a wide variety of leadership roles. This ensures that diverse experiences and opinions are present for all decisions. It used to be at this point in when I was talking that I would show you a variety of ways that people organize their schools. But we found that when we do that, people want to take that back to their team and replicate it. And we don't want you to do that. <laughs> we want you to create it as a collaborative process. And so while there are many examples of what this can look like, you have to figure out what is best for your own school. All of this leads to a more engaged staff willing to take accountability for their decisions. Every program and initiative needs that often discussed buy-in of the people actually doing the work. Teacher Power takes this concept to the highest levels by creating true ownership of decisions because the teachers are actually making them. Of course, the biggest question is, do teachers like the system? And does it improve student learning? Current research is a resounding yes. As you can imagine, there are lots of opportunities to study teacher powered. We encourage doctoral students to dive in. Sarah Kemper is a doctoral student at the University of Minnesota. Her dissertation project last year examined teacher professional work life at teacher powered schools. 
Her results show that over 90% of teachers agreed that they liked being there. They liked the, th the way things are run, and they enjoyed teaching at their current school more than any other job they've had. Not surprising, this leads to strong professional communities at teacher-powered schools, with 96% of teachers reporting that they get meaningful feedback from colleagues and 87% observing colleagues. And importantly, in areas traditionally reserved for only administration, over 60% were involved with teacher evaluation and budget decisions. This teacher-powered design impacts students as well. Over 95% say that students are learning skills to use in a democratic society. And 97% say that teachers are modeling leadership skills needed to solve collective problems. Shifting to outcomes for students at schools where teachers have decision-making roles, Professor Richard Ingersoll, a leading education researcher at the University of Pennsylvania, studied data from almost 1 million teachers and 25,000 schools. His team's research shows that when teachers have leadership roles, not only in instruction, but specifically in school-level policies areas like discipline, data showed more than 20% higher rates in ELA and over 11% higher rates in math. Interestingly, one would think that in instruction and learning programs, teachers' decision-making would have the biggest impact. His research shows that it's actually in school-level policy that when teachers are involved in that, that has the biggest impact on student learning. Similarly, John Schender's school climate research out of Cal State Los Angeles also echoes these results. Schools that had collaborative and empowering environments for teachers had higher student achievement rates than those that were collegial or worse yet, competitive. Teacher-powered teams would fall into the upper left quadrant on this graph. Shifting back to my teaching career, it turns out that I love teaching. I love the students, the families, the light in the students' eyes when they really understood something, and middle schoolers were definitely my jam. Who here teaches middle school, works with middle schoolers? Yeah. Middle schoolers are funny and sarcastic, and once you earn their trust, they grow in remarkable ways. I became an assistant principal, but I missed the classroom. I found re administration rewarding but lonely, as in never alone but separate. I felt like the teachers no longer saw me as a colleague, and I missed teaching students. I wish I knew then that there were teams who taught and led differently. In light of all this, I left. And looking back now, I wish I had known about Teacher Powered. Governance models that give teachers more autonomy and authority attract innovative and entrepreneurial students, or teachers, looking to meet their students' needs in unconventional ways. Many teacher-powered educators start teacher-powered schools because they want to create this type of student-centered learning environment for their students, and yet they're unable to at their current site. And these teams do not forget about families. In fact, they meaningfully involve students, families, and communities by involving them in the design process, actively encouraging families and communities to be on campus, and valuing families as experts in their larger community. As Kim and I were leaving our last site visit, we were driving across rural Minnesota, Wisconsin trying to beat an approaching storm. At each school, we were told, we're the only ones who do this. They felt like islands. And yet, we knew these teams weren't alone. We had visited almost a dozen schools, interviewed many more dozen, and we know there are probably hundreds more out there. They needed to see each other. And right then, on that stormy Wisconsin two-lane road was the shift. A shift from the research project to a network, to an initiative, to a movement. Teacher-powered schools are not new. We did not create them. We researched them. And then we gave teams a common language to describe their work. And then we connected to them to each other and helped them see each other. They formed a community of educators designing, creating, and leading their schools. The most common way people give up their power 
is thinking they don't have any. Other professional groups, such as doctors and lawyers, have long used self-governing models. This works for teachers, too. You have power. Power as a teacher, power as a team of educators, power as a community of independent charter schools. The fight isn't charter schools versus districts or unions. The struggle is within ourselves as a larger education community. Can we reimagine teaching, leading, learning? Can we build structures, practices, and systems that support the innovative, the creative, the collaborative? Can we create an equitable system? Can we resist returning to the status quo when things are hard? Yes, it's being done by hundreds of teams across the nation, by many teams sitting in this room, and yet we must join together. Teacher Powered is designed to be done as, as a team, not just at a school site, but a team of connected educators across the nation. Push yourself. What can your team do to move forward in the next year? Be brave. Move your team to the next level. Reach out and connect to other Teacher Powered educators. Bring your power to this movement. Create schools where students and adults thrive. These leaders are transforming education through innovative leadership practices from the ground up. The solutions to our education challenges are coming from within our profession. Be part of the journey. Thank you.